<clears throat> Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, decree to rebuild Jerusalem. We're going to talk about the year. Um, just to kind of refresh everybody, we're looking at Daniel 9.25. Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks. Then for 62 weeks, it shall be built again with squares and moat, but in troubled times. So kind of getting back on track with this study in the, in the context of the discussion is Gabriel's message from God to Daniel. The question is, what year was the decree to rebuild Jerusalem? And so we get that from Nehemiah 2, verse 1a, in the month of Nisan. We discussed that previously. That's in the spring. March, April, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, I took up the wine and gave it to the king. And that's Nehemiah talking. So the issue gets to the 20th year. When was the 20th year of King Artaxerxes? And so, you know, before we get into the, to the guts of that question, I'd like to point out there are differing thoughts as to the year of the decree. Was the year 445 or 444 BC? And one thing I would like to put out there is excellent scholarship for both years. And I would just encourage everybody to look into the matter for yourself. Uh, there is and will be disagreement. And I think that's okay. People are making a good faith effort to understand the mind of an infinite God. And I think we need to keep it in perspectives. We are finite humanity in a broken and fallen state. So we're going to do our best. We're limited, we're broken, we're fallen, we're in sin, and we're trying to understand an infinite God who's perfect, and we're going to make mistakes doing that. Um, so full disclosure, I'm in the 444 BC camp. You know, and there'd be people who'd be critical of me and say, I have a confirmation bias. And my answer would be, yes, I do. And this date makes sense to me for many reasons. And it fits in what in what we understand of time. And we're going to get into a little bit of time. And one of the things we're going to find out, we're crossing culture. We're crossing uh, calendar systems. And we're kind of mixing a couple of them to understand when something happened. And so, uh, I mean, the whole thing is, it's fraught with issues. And it's like a lot of the stuff we study in the Bible. You know, we're, we're crossing a, a cultural barrier. We're crossing a time barrier. And, um, you know, the way we mark time, the way Jews mark time, the way the Chinese mark time, we're all different. So uh, it's not going to be perfect. So we're going to jump in in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes. Uh, Smith's Bible Dictionary, John Wolverd's Every Prophecy of the Bible, and many others indicate Artaxerxes' Longimanus reign of power was initiated in 464 B.C. And so the, the math of that, once we, we establish when it started, is pretty straightforward. 464 minus 20 gets you to 444 B.C. So, you know, and that's the, that would be the simple, one simple answer to the question. Uh, the Gregorian calendar we use, didn't come into existence until 1582 AD. And I think this kind of adds to the confusion. And this prophecy was revealed <laughs> in what we would mark as 539 BC. So, I mean, you're looking at a gap of close to what, 20, 2100 years? Uh, you know, the time system we use in the West, the Gregorian calendar, wasn't, wasn't put into use till, till roughly 2100 years later. And, um, you know, scholars and experts are using years dated by a Gregorian system. So, you know, on the one hand, we're trying to make sense what month this happened in. We know it was Nisan, which is a Jewish month, and we would equate that to March or April in our system. The Jews have their own system of keeping time, and they will admit their ability to mark time from a year standpoint is off. I mean, that's, it, you know, you got people within that system, um, you know, although they claim this is year 5781 currently, but some people look at that and have some issues with how those years are marked. And, you know, then we get down to the issue. Jews recognize kings in their reign according to, quote, regnal years. And I went to Wikipedia just to define a regnal year. And a, a regnal year is a year of reign, is the year of the reign of a sovereign 
comes from the Latin regnum, meaning kingdom, rule. Regnal years considered the date as an ordinal, not a cardinal number. So, for example, a monarch would have a first year rule, a second year rule, a third year rule, and so on, but not a zeroth year of rule. So it's, you know, the best way. So it's like a baby is born and they are zero, <laughs> you know, for effectively 12 months until their birthday. And then they're one. But if it was a ruler and the baby was born as a ruler, it would be their first year of rule. So say they're born on uh, January, well, any date until that year is completed, that would be their first year of, of rule. So there is a little bit of a difference. Um, now that said, you know, you can go and you can look throughout a lot of literature, uh, biblical secular historians and scholars believe Artaxerxes reign started in December 465 BC. And that would mean, you know, if you look at a regnal year, the first regnal year of power would have been from December 465 BC to December 464 BC. Now, the majority of the first year of Artaxerxes' reign would have taken place in what is 464 B.C. So again, 20 years later of December 465 gets you to December 445. But the, the regnal year, the first regnal year would run from December 445 to December 444. Now... Looking at that time frame, we know the month of Nisan, which equates to the spring months of March, April, gets you to Nisan 1, March or April 444. So it falls within that time frame. So that gives you a little bit of a framework as to why I think um, that's when that started was 444 BC. But, but to me, um, well, we're going to get to that in a second. To me is where it ends. I mean, so you have a starting place and then you walk this thing forward. So we look at Daniel 9, 25 and God's clock is started with the issue to rebuild Jerusalem. And, you know, as I understand it, and as I would posit, that would be Nassan 1, 444 BC. And so you, we start marking time from that date. Uh, and that's when, that's when it was declared to rebuild Jerusalem. So a time period is defined to the coming of a prince. Now we know that prince to be Jesus Christ. And the verse states the following, there shall be seven weeks, then for 62 weeks. And again, we get that from Daniel 9, 25. And then if we look at how Jews mark time in a Jewish calendar, they would calculate time in the following manner. So seven weeks or seven times seven plus 62 weeks or 62 times seven equals 483 years. 483 years times 360 days equals 173,880 days. And so, and again, if you want to take a look at the idea of calculation for a set of weeks, you can click on this. Gabriel 70 weeks is something I'd done previously in this series, but it breaks down the idea of a set of weeks or uh, how Jews viewed, you know, a set of weeks is a year. So is it a year or a literal day? And obviously it has to be, has to be years because this whole prophecy was not fulfilled in 490 literal days. So we have to be looking at years. So, but if you want to take a look at uh, calculating a set of weeks or calculating years, you can click on this link below and, um, get some insight as to how Jews look at time and marking time. But with a starting point of Nisan 1, 444 BC, a decree from Artaxerxes was, Artaxerxes was made to rebuild Jerusalem. So take your pick, whether you go 69 weeks, 483 years, or 173,880 days later, the math calculation results in the spring or Nisan of 33 AD. Um, and, and here's an equation for that. So, you know, Nisan 1, 444 BC plus 69 weeks, 483 years, 173,880 days equals, and it runs you to Passover 33 AD. And to me, what happened in 33 AD is far more remarkable. You know, the end, the result of the equation 
to me confirms it and just nails it down. And I'll even say this, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a believer that, that Jesus died in 33 AD. I wrote a book on it. So you can feel free to read the book. Also, the same information is captured here in the website. You know, you can type in 33 AD and get a, a lot of information on that. Uh, <clears throat> you could also click on gospel. Got all kinds of stuff on that too. But if you want it in a book version, it is available. Um, I think, what was it? Amazon wants to charge at least eight or nine bucks for it, for a physical book and three bucks for a, for an e-book. And I know some people say, well, you, the gospel's not for sale. No, the gospel is not for sale. And you don't have to buy the book. That's fine. But if you do choose to buy the book and you want to see it in a in a condensed version, it is there for those who want to purchase that. Uh, no, I'm not selling the gospel. Jesus died, buried, raised again. That's the gospel. That's not for sale. That's free to all who believe it. In 33 AD is the year Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey and presented himself. And Jesus demonstrated himself as the spotless sacrificial lamb under inspection. He did that for the whole, you know, for essentially the week, you know, Monday through Monday through Thursday. He was <clears throat> he was there. People checked him out, found him innocent, found him spotless, found him sinless. And Christ was the sacrificed lamb of God of Passover. He died on the cross. He was buried as the symbol of for the feast of unleavened bread and Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, resurrected as the first fruits. And all that happened just as God said it would down to the day, down to the hour, down to the minute. And you get into the timing of some of the things that happened during the passion week and Passover of 33 AD. And you look at the timing of it relative to the law blows your mind. And the best thing I thought I could choose was Galatians 4, verses 4 through 5. But when the fullness of time had come, and that's what it's talking about, um, God's, God's schedule, God's timeline, God declared, God's prophecy, he knew his son would come through Jerusalem and fulfill his mission to address sin. He knew that from... <laughs> you know, from at least for, I mean, he knew it obviously from, from before the creation of the world, but he laid it out to Gabriel who told Daniel, uh, years before the clock would start ticking in a prophecy. It's one of the most amazing prophecies in the Bible, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoptions as sons. I just, I find it unbelievable. It's amazing. And that's our God. And that's his son and his spirit indwells in us who believe in him. And it's, that's pretty cool. So this is presented under, uh, angels gospel and again for some of the tags if you want to read go into more in depth into the gospel in the the passion week 33 ad and we got some other things um uh, got some articles on artaxerxes we got a few of those building up uh, a lot of stuff being done in daniel but this this whole section is being done under angels uh, again we're we're reviewing what gabriel brought forth to daniel and daniel would write down um in, in Daniel 9, we're getting close to finishing up with this. I think we're on Daniel 9, 25, goes through 27. Uh, and we're going to take a, take a look at Michael coming up, some of the things that uh, that Michael had to say. But we're, we're covering angels right now. So I'm going to hopefully finish this series up. Got some more writing to do. And then we're probably going to take a look at demons in the New Testament, different characters, different, different creatures, um, then angels. But if you want to sign up and receive notification, type in your email address. We don't sell this stuff to anybody. WordPress doesn't sell it to anybody. But you could receive notification every time we put something out. Um, social media watch. Um, currently, we are on Twitter, Facebook. It looks like Parler is going to get shut down. Um, 
not meeting the community standards of Amazon, Google, and Facebook. And, well, not Facebook, but Apple. I'm sorry. And they're just not going to have a, a host site. So we're going to be watching some of those issues with, with social media and our ability to communicate these things. Uh, we're, I think we're interest, in, entering an, an interesting time. Uh, with our ability to communicate with others. And one thing is you can always find it here at paulthepope.com. Don't seem to be catching any blowback from WordPress. So, um, and it's happening fast. I don't know what else to say. Um, so we'll keep an eye on it. But the big thing, appreciate you guys following along. Um, please feel free to share with others. It's like every day, we're one day closer to Jesus coming to to take his bride home. Um, wow. I think we're in for some interesting times. I think 2021 is going to be a little bit more volatile than 2020. As crazy as that sounds, I hope I'm wrong, but time will tell. Appreciate you guys following along. Have a great evening. Thanks a lot. Bye.